Hey everybody, Zach here for the Friday Fishing Report once again uh, for Pacific Angler. This week we got something that I've been kind of playing around with for a while now. Uh, I'm calling this one the Simple Marabou Spay. It's a pretty classic-y looking fly. Um, again, on a single hook, something I've been kind of playing around with quite a bit. Um, I've got ideas to turn this into a stinger hook variation as well and even a tube fly. So uh, it's a pretty cool fly, lots of fun to tie and uh, should be good for those days when uh, the water's nice and dirty. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let's get to it. So pop that guy out of the vise. The hook I'm using for this one is a size one single salmon hook. Um, the cool thing about the salmon hooks is they have this return bend. Um, just keeps that eye nice and nice and big and clean. Um, there's a few little tricks here that I'll um, show you to help deal with the step in the hook as well. So it's not fully welded together there. It's kind of a, just a return bend on that wire. And I'm gonna start with some 140 denier black thread. And I start right up at the eye to help close that gap. And I take my thread all the way down the hook shank trying to keep it as even as possible and until I get to about just a little past the hook point there that's kind of what I want and we're gonna put in a tag on this guy so this tag is gonna be some Lagerton oval in large uh, this is a metallic tinsel which is kind of cool really strong stuff extremely durable Lagerton some of the finest stuff on the market I'm gonna catch it in by the tip on my side and just take a few wraps back here down the bend to touch. It's just gonna create a little flashy hot spot. As you can see, I've got that tip section right there. That's roughly where I wanna finish this. So I'm gonna take about five wraps or so, five or six, whatever you feel is nice. Three. Four, and get one more on there, five. I'll capture that guy in on my side, right on top. Some snug wraps there. And I'm gonna trim that guy like so. And the beauty of this metallic tinsel is I can actually pull on that, and it pulls the metallic coating away, and it just leaves that inner core. And for this style fly, I like to keep the body nice and smooth, so that's why I do that. I just don't have a big chunk of tinsel hanging on there. And then I'm going to take, actually, I'm going to unwind that. We're not going to jump ahead to that stage quite yet. I'm going to take my thread right to the back of that tag there. And I'm going to tie my tail. So my tail for this fly is some black squirrel tail. I was kind of digging through my materials the other day. And this is one I haven't used too much of, but it's a uh, pretty cool material nonetheless. So I'm just going to grab a small chunk here. A little more than I think I need because once I pull out all the under fur, it kind of thins it out quite a bit. Trim it close to the tail there. And like I said, I'm going to kind of grab all the ends here, pull out all the under chunks, all the stuff I don't need. And I've got a half decent looking tail there. I'm going to go. I guess you could say about a hook shank in length for the tail. I'm going to tie that in right at the base of the tag there. So this fly does have a lot of elements that you'll see in those classic style like spay flies. This is kind of a very simple pattern to kind of get you going on on that style of fly. Which look really cool, they fish really well. And I'm just going to grab those butt ends, cut them at a bit of an angle. And I'll keep following that up. I'm gonna go take my thread right to where that return bend ends, which is right there. And I'm gonna take some small sized oval tinsel this time. I'm gonna tie it in where that step is. This is just gonna help fill in that gap along the side of the hook shank, create a nice smooth body, which is what we want. Tie that in. Hopefully you can see that there, it just kind of fills in that gap. And I'll tie this in all along the side of the hook shank like so. Just tuck that away there. And then my body is going to be some Lagerton flat braid. This is in copper. Um, pretty cool material. You can get your diamond braid and stuff like that, but it just doesn't lay as flat as the Lagerton does. Um, 
It's expensive, but it's definitely worth it if you want those nice smooth bodies. And again, I'm going to tie this in so it lines up just perfectly with that little step there on the return bend. And this will help to fill in that gap. Kind of like so. I got one little strand there. It's okay. I can trim that away. Now using the rotary feature, I'm just going to take a few or full wrap here at the back. You can see how nicely and smoothly that body lays with the Lagerton flat braid. Definitely worth the investment. Definitely takes your flies and adds another level of fishiness to them. And keep going like that until we hit basically where that return band ends. Unwrap my thread there a couple times. Capture that in place. Turn the rest away, like so. Just wrap back on that a touch. Now I'm just gonna rib the fly. So I'm gonna take a full wrap at the back here. And we'll get one, I think it's six or seven wraps. Three, four, five, six, yeah, seven to nine. <laughs> tie that off there. Just adds that another level of uh, dimension to the body of the fly. Really capture that in place, trim away the excess, like so. All right, so now we're going to tie in a underwing, which is going to have a little bit of flash on it. So this is some UV polar chenille and copper. Comes on a string, kind of like so. And what I like to do so I like to have all the fibers facing down when I tie this in. That way when I wrap it, they all face backwards, which is what we want. So I just gather the tip there, kind of tidy that up a touch. Tie that in nice and snug here. A few wraps. I'm not going to overdo it with the flash. Just a few wraps. Three to four. Depends on how full that chunk of uh, polar flash is. Three. We'll go one more. Number four. This black and copper color variation is, is pretty fishy, especially when the water's quite brown or milky. Um, anything dark I find generally stands out a lot more and it makes it easier for the fish to find, which is what we want. So I'll just take a few good wraps there. And I basically tied this flash in right at the end of that return bend. So that way I got enough room for, for my uh, collar of marabou as well as um, our mallard that we're gonna put on there, and even our jungle cock eyes. So I'm going to, I got a nice strand of black marabou here. I'm just going to isolate the tip. So I just lick my fingers, pull that in, create that nice tying point. And I'm gonna tie that in right in front of that polar chenille. And fold that back so that the tip doesn't pull out on me. All these fibers going backwards and I'm just gonna take the edge of my scissors here I'm just gonna run it along the quill of this marabou feather with the side closest to you this just helps to fold all the material back and here I'm gonna get three to five wraps so it really depends on the quality of the feather some are fuller than others I don't want to overdo it because I do want this flash to kind of shine through flash out of the way there. That's wrap number three. I'm probably going to tie it off right there. Like I said, you don't want to overdo it too, too much. We're going to add another collar here. Kind of fills in that gap. There you go. So that polar chenille underneath creates a nice little shoulder for this to sit on. I'm just gonna tidy that up a touch. Just like so, I kind of wet my fingers there just to kind of keep it under control. And now for my main collar, it's going to be some mallard. This is in a uh, blue dun, so kind of a gray kind of color. Play around with this stuff. Like I've, I've done this fly in a lot of different variations. Black and chartreuse, black and pink, black and blue. You name it, pink and, pinks and oranges. 
lots of different color variations for this this pattern so experiment have some fun with it now the one thing to consider when choosing a feather for this collar is I want the side so I'm looking at the curvature of the, of the feather when I'm looking at it uh, curving away from me I want the side on the right so the nice side to be longer than the side on the left that's the side that's gonna be wrapping around and it's gonna cup that marabou and create that nice flat collar that we want if you have it the other way around I find the fibers kind of stick up all at different angles and stuff once it gets fished obviously they fall down but I like to have it looking pretty in my box because I'm a little OCD and picky like that so I'm just gonna tie that in like I did the marabou feather a few wraps fold back that tip trim away the excess and again I'm gonna take my side of my scissors here and just fold that one side over just makes it easier to wrap, kind of like so. And I'll squish it at the stem. Here I'm gonna take a few wraps here. So I got that nice heavy curvature, the longer side wrapping around the hook shank, which is what I want. And go three, maybe four wraps here, something like so. This is a pretty big feather, so getting rid of a little bit extra there. Lock it down. Now, to really secure that in and just tidy it up a little bit. And what you can do, you can take a Velcro brush, which I have left on my tying desk, kind of fill in a different spot with a little more room to it. Basically what that'll do is it'll split out all those fibers. But well, that's fine, just the way it is. I'm just kind of pick at it with my scissors a bit. Right. Just kind of twist those a bit. And to finish this fly off, I'm gonna use some jungle cock. Now, jungle cock is these cool little eyes right here. Um, I understand having a cape of this stuff is out of the budget for a lot of people, but there's some cool materials like the Pro Sport Fisher Gen 3 jungle cock. We carry this and I think just the large size, which is these guys here, which is good for the majority of your flies. Um, it's a pretty cool synthetic. It's probably the best looking synthetic jungle cock out there. The other cool thing is you can add Sharpie to it. So you can definitely color it up and play with it. Put a little drop of resin on it. Just kind of adds a little more three dimensionality to your flies. So I'm just gonna pluck two of these off of the cape here. And I'm gonna tie them in, start on my side. Like I said, these are definitely the best looking synthetics that I have played with. Just tie that off there. I'm gonna tie them in on a slight angle upwards. Just tighten that up. And I will do the same on your side so you can see what I'm getting at here. Can measure it up, make them the same. Nice snug wraps here. Now, that one's not sitting nice, so I will go back and start again. This guy will get tied in just like so. Kind of play with them a bit, force them out. Trim off that butt section. Tidy that up with some thread wraps here. Create a nice neat head. like so. I don't worry about it being super perfect because I'm going to coat it in some resin here right into a nice tight whip finish. Trim away our thread there. Essentially that's our fly there. You can pretty much fish that as is. But like I said I like to reinforce the heads on these with some solar res bone dry. One of our favorite head cement resins on the market today. I'm just gonna dab that all the way around. A little extra coming off there. Just shape a nice head with that resin. Like so. Just keep rotating there. Now you don't wanna zap it right away. What that will do is cause it to smoke and the fumes can be a little harmful if you're not in a very well ventilated room. So I like to spin it fairly quickly zap it with my light 
and slowly get in closer. That cures a little bit slower, which is nice. If you want a proper full cure, go a little bit slower. Just like the real jungle cock, there's a real UV tinge to, to this product, which is kind of nice. And nice and slow with the resin. After a couple seconds there. And there you have it. Simple Marabou Spay, which is definitely one you want to have in your box for those dirty water days that we've been having lately. This one's guaranteed to get you some fish, so tie some up, enjoy it. If you don't tie, I will have a couple of these in the shop in the next little bit here, so come on by and grab some before they're gone. All right, thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next time.